Welcome to the subject of mass and balance, which you will find is essential to a pilot's preparation for every flight. The subject is closely linked with aeroplane performance. Your preparation for flight departure must include completed mass and balance calculations. The flight cannot depart unless the mass and balance has been calculated and checked. The operator of an aeroplane is responsible for preparing and completing the relevant mass and balance documentation prior to flight. The aeroplane commander has to check and sign that the mass and balance documentation is correct as part of his flight preparation. The lessons will cover mass and balance legislation, terminology and calculating and changing centre of gravity. At the end of the course, you will be able to understand and construct a load and trim sheet, as shown on screen. The terms mass and weight are extensively featured during the mass and balance lessons, and it is essential to explain the difference between them. Let us start with defining mass. Mass is the quantity of matter in a body. Weight is a force produced when mass is subjected to gravity. When imperial units are used, mass is given in pounds and weight is given in pounds force. You will also use the International System of Units, or SI units as they are known. In this case, mass is expressed in kilograms and weight is given in newtons. In the study of mass and balance, mass is the preferred quantity. It is vitally important to understand, from the beginning, the basic fact that the force of gravity will act on the total mass of an aeroplane in a vertically downward manner, both in the air and on the ground. The point through which the mass acts is called the centre of gravity. It may be referred to as the point of balance. The centre of gravity position will vary throughout the operation of the aeroplane due to the position of load, use of fuel and movement of crew and passengers. It is vitally important that it remains within the boundaries set by the manufacturer. The limited range of centre of gravity can be found in the aeroplane flight manual. We will deal with movement of centre of gravity in detail later on in the course. In this scene we will look at the factors affecting mass and balance which individually or collectively have an important influence on aeroplane operation. We will be looking at the effect of exceeding mass and centre of gravity limits. Getting it wrong can have disastrous consequences. All aeroplanes have structural limitations imposed upon them by the designer to protect the integrity of the structure. The limiting parameters are documented in the aeroplane flight manual and exceeding any of them could lead to a serious incident or, at worst, an accident. Naturally, we must always ensure that limits are not exceeded, but at the same time we must be aware of the consequence of exceeding them. There are several effects of exceeding mass limitations. The effect of exceeding the mass limits for takeoff and landing would result in increasing the limiting takeoff and landing distance requirements. A further effect of exceeding mass limits will result in the rate of climb and ceiling or flight level being reduced. Another effect of exceeding mass limits will be to reduce the aeroplane's range and endurance. The aeroplane's speed range will also be affected if mass limits are exceeded. It will reduce the maximum speed, normally a Mach number, and increase the stalling speed. Exceeding mass limits will have an important effect on aeroplane manoeuvrability 
because of the decrease in ability to change its flight path. A very noticeable effect, if mass limits were exceeded, would be on the aeroplane's tyres and brakes. The excess mass would quicken the wear of tyres and brakes, shortening their life. Exceeding mass limits will place undue stress on the airframe, which would eventually shorten the fatigue life of the aeroplane. Having learnt previously that the centre of gravity has forward and aft limits, we must learn the effects of exceeding those limits. A pilot will never knowingly accept an aeroplane outside of these limits. Let's look initially at exceeding the forward limit. This will result in an increase of the stalling speed. Let us now look at a further effect of the centre of gravity being forward of the forward limit. This will affect the longitudinal stability of the aeroplane, requiring larger control surface deflections. This can add to pilot fatigue. Another important consideration of exceeding the forward limit is that the tailplane must produce a larger balancing downforce. This increased tail downforce requires increased elevator deflection, which will add to total drag. This will result in increased fuel consumption and a subsequent decrease in range and endurance. Exceeding the forward limit will also affect the speeds used in takeoff calculations, notably the decision speed V1, the rotate speed VR, and the minimum unstick speed VMU. This will also result in an increase of takeoff distance required. Having learnt that exceeding a forward centre of gravity limit is to be avoided, it is vitally important that the aft limit is also not exceeded. If the aft limit is exceeded, the longitudinal stability is reduced, which means that stick forces will be light. This could lead to the airframe being overstressed. If the aeroplane inadvertently went into a spin with the aft limit exceeded, a flat spin could ensue. In these circumstances, it would be more difficult to recover from the spin. As we learnt previously, the range and endurance was reduced with the forward limit being exceeded. This is also the case with the aft limit exceeded. The resulting extreme manoeuvres lead to an increase in drag. Having successfully completed the first lesson, you will have learnt the importance of mass and balance and its relevance to our pre-flight preparation and aeroplane performance for a safe flight. We have explained the difference between mass and weight. We have looked at the association between mass and centre of gravity. We have also looked at the factors if the centre of gravity limits are exceeded. To conclude, we have looked at the effects on aeroplane performance of exceeding mass limits.